Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Short shows. Mason. Yes. Put on Ricardo Montalban. I'm doing it because you, you've got to have we're a backup recorder. These, we're going to talk about these TV shows. <laughs> And you're always banging on about it, quite frankly. I certainly am, uh, because this on this show we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. And with me as always, is that my co-host Nick Mason? Sure is. Knowing that it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, what a setup for me. Absolutely, Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. And a betrayal? Yeah, sure. I think. Well, Same that way. It's been a big week, hasn't it, mm. for betrayals, Napoleon, you know? Oh, that's true. Actually, so many yeah. people being like, I'll invade this with you. And then they don't. They let him down. Right? He's just a guy. Leave him alone. He's just a guy. He's an absolute, he's the master of warfare. Because he was like, what if we shoot cannons at people? <laughs> Seems poor sportsmanship. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do I'm it. I'm going to shoot cannons at more people than anyone's ever shot cannons at anyone before. <laughs> this I'm, man's a genius. I brought more cannons. Well, I, I do want to talk about that specifically. Okay. But we've got to get to all the news, Mason. We've mm. got a big... Shuffle around for Scream 7, which oh, yeah. is going to be a really fun thing to talk oh, about. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've got some Superman legacy casting. We've got a new creative chief officer at Lucasfilm. We've got a uh, new Karate Kid movie, Mason. Oh, yeah, that's right. It, is it merging the worlds it of Karate Kid? It appears to be, yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the Karate Kid multiverse, wow. Oh, my God, another Jason Bourne movie. Oh, my God. And then, of course, uh, the director who stole a bunch of money from Netflix. <laughs> Allegedly. Or he did. It seems like he just did. Okay. Well, the New York Times said he did. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's their fault anyway. That's right. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Napoleon. Mm. Because what a movie and what a time to be alive. Absolutely. I just want to quickly say up top, uh, I was on a podcast recently, which will be out on Monday. So oh, by the yes. time this goes out on the regular feed, called Confessions with Sam Peterson. You oh, might yes. be familiar. Mm-hmm. I recently <laughs> did on the same feed. He also has a podcast. There's a smaller one called I'm the Arsehole where they read, he reads stuff from Reddit. It's like, is this an arsehole? And sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. sometimes not. It's called Am I the Asshole? It's not called I Am the Did Asshole. Did I do? Yeah. You did say am that. Am I a big asshole? I think asshole? that was a Freudian slip of some kind. Am I, though? I'm on a podcast called I'm an Asshole. <laughs> and everyone thinks it. <laughs> Was that just all the correspondence? Guilty conscience. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, but I did an episode of Confessions with uh, Rob Millsy Mills. People might know. My goodness. Pop uh, star Rob Pop Millsy Mills. That's right. He's, uh, he's, he's a star of stage and screen that's or whatever. That's true, yeah. He's very nice. I'm like, stage and screen or stage whatever. Stage and screen. Oh, whatever. Is that on his business card? Yeah, that's what he handed to me. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm like, what's this guy like? I don't know. I've never met him. And yeah. he was, yeah, he was really, really cool. I think, so, you'd, you know, you probably can't endure in this sort of business if you like. No. He's been the doing worst it for, like, person in the world. 20 years, yeah, yeah. plus. So. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. So that's um, well, you can only endure in this business if oh, you're the if worst you're person in the world. Oh yeah, it's one or the other. It's one or the other, and he was the good one. <laughs> he was the good that's one. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, that is um, yeah, confessions, and it'll be linked below. Um, oh, it's just a fun podcast. You've been on a few times. There's yeah, a bunch true. of great comedians and guests, and us somehow, in. and we're in it. Too, we're in it sometimes. sometimes yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So Sam is an absolute delight. Um, I, I've always wondered, like. You know, sometimes you get the you get a message and it's like, hey, can you come on my podcast? And you're like, oh, that's nice. But then you're like, who else dropped out? How many more people dropped out? Exactly. What? Where All am I? All of them. Where am I on the call list? Oh, <laughs> oh, you had to you had to create a new call list. <laughs> you ran out of you ran out of slots. Okay. Well, that's your fine. phone died from yeah. calling different people. You had to buy a new phone. And you saw me walking past. <laughs> Charlie Brown style with my head down, oh, no, as I often guys. do, and then and, and you're like, no, he'll do, he'll do, yeah. Mason, we got to do this. Uh, we're going to talk about Scream Seven mm. because Mar- uh, Melissa Barrera, who's the star of the last two Scream movies, mm. she's kind of taken over from the uh, Neve Campbell oh yes that's uh, right. role to be the the lead Scream Queen, mm. in the Scream series, a series which like somehow has just remained. Or re, it's re-emerged as relevant and it's got good twists and turns. It's endured like a Rob Millsy Mills. Exactly. The Rob Millsy Mills of horror franchises. Exactly, Mason. Mm. So, yeah, but due to some Instagram stories that you put up about a month ago, uh, she has been let go. Mm. And now we've got to get into a, a conflict. Yeah, we sure <laughs> do. <it's all> right. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to. We can that. avoid it. If you don't want to hear this, skip yep. ahead. It's all been time-coded by the great Rob Collings. Who didn't it? know we were going to do this. <laughs> None of this is his fault. No. So that's cool. Absolutely not. Uh, so yeah, I know. Where do you want to start on this? I mean, what what was the statement? Well, the statement was from Spyglass. Uh, Spyglass stance is unequivocally clear. Unequivocally, they spelled that wrong, that's, not me. Yeah, that's I said bad it right. on them. Uh, we have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism or the incitement of hate in any form, including false references to genocide, ethnic cleansing, Holocaust distortion, or any other that flagrantly crosses the line into hate speech. Now, if you looked at her stories, which you can, they are and available. I did, yes. 
not, none of that stuff is present in what mm. she said. Like a lot of people, she's like, maybe nobody should be bombing civilians. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> maybe there's a bunch of children that have been like murdered, mm. war crimed, big time. Mm. And this is also, I just want to be clear, this is not me saying that like what Han- Hamas did initially was like, justified and like what a cool thing to happen mm. god i hate doing this mate right it's bad because you got to do and but this but this but this but this well, you see, know? well i was gonna say look you and i are both australians mm-hmm. and i would say generally speaking we like australians yes yeah, sure. generally but i would say i'm i'm very confident in saying i don't endorse anything the australian government has done no well our whole country is built on a genocide yeah and, literally and and for as long as i can remember it's just been human rights abuses and corruption yeah right if somebody from outside australia came to me and was like i hate australia i hate the fact that you know you have an island prison concentration camp and you put refugee children in it yep and i'd be like yeah <laughs> we do and I, I hate that also and i also hate the fact that that primarily exists because politicians want to give billions of dollars to their mates in the private yep. sector to run that mm-hmm. in the hopes that when they get drummed out of office for being bad politicians they can just get a, like a like a plum consultancy gig yep. for millions of dollars which happens literally every time every single time yep but and and I, look i and i say that to say we think the Jewish people are tremendous. Mm-hmm. We have many Jewish friends and colleagues. Yeah. Also, it's and, not, they're and, not a monolith. Also. No, exactly. You know I mean? yeah. Like any people. Yeah, we have we yeah. have Jewish friends and colleagues and listeners. I presume, and yeah. I, in my case, I have Jewish relatives. Yep. And uh, and we don't want to see them killed by Hamas or anyone. Yeah. But the government of Israel. Yeah. And the IDF seem to be doing some big time war crimes. Yeah, pretty I mean, blatantly. You, just, I mean, you would have seen the footage. It's kind of hard to avoid. Mm. Just terrifying yeah. stuff. And look, by their own accounts, they have at this point killed tens of thousands of Palestinians, including thousands of children. Yeah. And uh, that's what we call collective punishment, and that's a war crime. Yeah. You know, the, the I would say the only, like, that that's too far. Yeah. It, but personally, <laughs> I'm a, look, the, the, the official stance of the Weekly Planet podcast is carpet bombing thousands of children is not cool. Yeah, don't do it. We're, we're against it. Yeah. And look, the only reason... Look, I, I feel like the only reason you could think that was justified mm. is if you either think that everybody in Palestine is Hamas, yeah. which cannot possibly be true, no. or you think that – or even if you think that every adult in Palestine is in Hamas or is sympathetic to Hamas, the children are not. Absolutely. They cannot be because yeah. they are children and they yeah. don't know anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or you think that – Palestinians are not human beings, which they are. Yeah. So there you go. So, so we're yeah. against this. Anyway, so Scream 7. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, again, if you read those comments, it's literally just like, it's like, you know, called speaking about ceasefire and, you know, and like maybe could we not yeah. carpet which is, bomb which, which is, which civilians. Is, which is our thing as well. Yeah. It's been hospitals. It's been schools. It's yep. been neighborhoods. It's been you should evacuate this way and then they bomb the evacuation yeah. room. Exactly. So, and look, and if you've listened to this, I mean, it shouldn't be. At this point, if you've listened to this from podcast for more than like a couple of weeks, you probably know where we're at on this. Mm. Look, if you if you if you like us and you don't know what to do, I never know what to do. Yeah, same, right? Mm. Um, it's also because I don't like to learn. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, go on. You can, you can call your local member of parliament or, or congressman, senator, whatever it is. Uh, I'm sure if you, you can find a list of resources on the internet if you want to call. Look, I, I look. Our official stance is we'd like a ceasefire. Absolutely. But um, which the, we're we're in the middle of maybe still by the time mm, this comes we'll say yeah. yeah let's let's it's not it's a temporary thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, look yeah. Uh, or you know there there are plenty of uh, petitions you can sign online uh, you can go there there in Melbourne especially and I'm sure elsewhere around the world mm. there's been a bunch of protests I've been to a couple of those uh, yeah. and and yeah just just get out there and you know show show support for we don't want to see kids blown up absolutely but also if you've heard this and you're like this is a personal affront to me. Mm. That's that's on you, I think. Yeah. So, but we love you. But we still love you because we accept everybody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, so what's going to happen with Screen Seven is well, now that she's out, and apparently also how much of that will get cut out? Well, who knows? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Jenna, yeah, let's listen back and see if we sound like lunatics. Absolutely. Uh, Jenna Ortega was also left, but apparently that's also that was like reported again because it was rumored that she was filming Wednesday. So okay. Something that's been known for a while. Yeah, and she hasn't said anything. She hasn't no. made any statement about it, so we can't like presume that no, she's doing it in, we don't in know. protest or anything like that. So yeah. we do know the director was like, he put up a tweet. This, that was is like, this sta- sucks. This is my statements from Christopher Landon. Everything sucks. Stop yelling. This was not my decision to make. So what they're doing now, the producers over at Spyglass, they're approaching Neve Campbell, who left the franchise, and Patrick Dempsey, if you recall, is the husband of Neve Campbell in the movies they oh, met yeah. in Screen Three. So they're going to have to throw a bunch of money at them sure? to make this happen. Um, I thought that that franchise like did really well to like lose 
like the star and continuing yeah, the last sure, one. Yeah. So they're in a bit of a bind here. Yeah. But, you know, any you, you can fire people. You're allowed to fire people. So <laughs> yeah. if that's the decision that you want to make, you Maybe can our hosting that. company will fire us. Maybe they will. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. This is a, this, what fun discourse. Yeah, I love it. Love, Let's talk love about being in the discourse. <laughs> love having a platform <laughs> where we get emails one way or the other that are like, you should join the discourse. Mm. We're like, but we don't want to. <laughs> we want to keep this in our private lives, quite frankly. <laughs> so uh, Superman Legacy got some casting this week, right. Mason. A couple confirmed this by THR. Skylar Gizondo is yes. playing Jimmy Olsen. Mm-hmm. And boy, does he look exactly like Jimmy Olsen. Not yeah. muscular Jimmy Olsen. That's right. They're always yeah. giving us a muscular That's Jimmy Olsen. Right. He's got a handgun. He's a secret agent. I'm actually James Olsen now. <laughs> Because that's what a handsome man would be called. That's what a man. Not in every instance. No, but a lot of the time, yeah. Uh, on top of that, deadline reporting that Sarah Sampio, Sam Payo is mm-hmm. playing Eve Teskmarks. Okay. Said that again. Teskmarker. I think so. So that's Lex Luthor's like assistant girlfriend. Yeah. Uh huh. Confidant. Mm. She's in Superman One. Yeah, and she's uh, in Superman Returns. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she is. Is she? Yeah, it's Parker Pose. Oh, that is that is her. Is it? I thought it was a different character. I think it's. Great. That's really good stuff. Let's do some big time research. Let's do some light But Skylar Gisondo is a great, is, that's a great get. That's oh, his, absolutely. Um, that he is, um, yeah, he, people will know from Santa Clarita Diet. He's also yeah. on The Righteous Gemstones, I believe, although I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen that, that show. Yeah. No, she plays Kitty Kowalski. Oh. So I thought she wasn't the same. And now I feel vindicated in my opinions, yeah. all of my opinions. Okay, great. Um, and in addition to that, this, the rumor is that Nicholas Holt is Lex Luthor. That's great. Who you might know as the little boy from About a Boy and nothing else. <laughs> with right. his little bowl haircut. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and he's hanging out with Hugh Grant. He's getting his shoes stolen. That's right. That it? guy's Lex Luthor. And two decades of nothing. And then they brought him back. <laughs> It's a real Kei Hui Kwan situation. Absolutely it is. Uh, I think even if this is true, which it seems to be, I think he's a great choice. Mm. He's, like, young. He probably looks good bald, I assume. And the real-life narrative is he got knocked back for the role of Superman. Yeah. Which is a very Lex Luthor thing to do. Absolutely. Sinister. Sinister motives so. is what you're saying. This actor <laughs> That's has. right. Revenge. Oh, my God. Um, you know what they should do is they should get um, – Dave, what is it, Corrin Sweat? What's yeah. his name? Is it David Corrin He's looking big as well. Have you seen yeah. a photo? Is it David Corrin Sweat? David Corrin Sweat. You should, they, should, they should get him to throw some chemicals on Nicholas Holt so he goes bald. For real. For real. You know. <laughs> but anyway, Skylar Gisondo, great choice. Yeah. Uh, he's got that. He's got the, the Jimmy Olsen incredible enthusiasm followed by incredible regret <laughs> vibe. <laughs> sure, you know that yeah. thing? Where he just barrels into something and he's like, oh, no, yeah. I've gone too far here. Why did I do this? Yeah. Superman, catch me. You know, he falls off or whatever. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But also he has a piece of kryptonite on him for some reason. Why did he, he do that? What was this? Uh, because he's silly. Sometimes he might. Oh, I see, right. He's like, what am I doing? He doesn't sure. know. But sometimes he knows. Yeah. All right, first of all, stop reading directly from the script of Superman <laughs> Legacy, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, what else we got next, Mason? Dave Filoni. That's the guy from Star Wars. That's the guy from some Star Wars, a lot of Star Wars. He's been promoted to... Go no, on. he's the guy from all Star Wars. Well, he's been promoted to Chief Creative Officer. Over at Lucasfilm. Yeah. So that's in it. Like, he's kind of did this role unofficially. Well, here's a statement from him who said, in the past, in a lot of projects I'll be brought into, I would see it after it already developed at a good ways. In the new role, it opened up to basically everything that's going on. When we're planning the future of what we're doing now, I'm involved at the inception phase. Now, some people like this because he's considered to be like the protege of George Lucas. That's true. He came on board with Clone Wars in 2008 or before that, but it came out in 2008 and he's been like... A lot, of the, a lot of good stuff you've seen in animated in particular, like, has come from him. Has he done movie stuff? Uh, no, he's, stuff? he started doing um, – he started directing some episodes of The Mandalorian uh-huh. and worked with that with John Favreau, but Ahsoka is his, the Ahsoka TV series. So that's the other side of it. People are like, well, that's not a great TV series, is it? And now this guy is <laughs> sure, yeah. sort of in charge of Star Wars. But I wouldn't say this is necessarily in charge. This is just, like, a guy who's like, well, you can't do that because, like, mm. that guy doesn't have a laser yet and whatever. <laughs> you know, sure. that guy doesn't have a laser. He gets it in the in James, are you reading directly from the script of Star Wars Episode Ten again? Correct. Wow. <laughs> that guy hasn't got a laser yet. He's going to get it later. <laughs> Thanks, Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's back from the dead. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you think about that? I mean, I guess it's good to have some oversight, somebody who's, like, looking at all of the things. Sure. You know? Was there not a guy like that before? I don't think so. Huh. I mean, as you said, he was kind of brought in afterwards. 
Or like if they'd go to do something, they'd have to go to like the Canon group and be like, can we do this? Does this guy have a laser yet? Mm. No, he doesn't have a laser yet. No, we've checked Canon. <laughs> we've checked the canonicity of this guy. He doesn't have a laser. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Wink. Wink. Uh, it does, does that wink imply he's going to get a laser? We can't say. We would never wink. say. Yeah. Wink. And now I'm just saying wink. <laughs> My goodness. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, it could, it, again, it is good to kind of have a, I mean, uniformity doesn't sound good. <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> Which sure doesn't. Sure doesn't. Yeah. When you, you when you said uniformity, I just imagined like I oh, sorry, I meant uh, to say conformity. That's better, isn't oh, it? Yep, that's even better. When you said uniformity, I just pictured a big tub of margarine. So I think, What? I don't know. Because it's all uniform you open the margarine. Oh, and it's, it's all like a so smooth, smooth and, and pale yellow oh, and not interesting. God. I love that a lot. But what can you do with it? Yeah. You can spread it on some bread and you can go, mm, mm, I would have preferred butter. Yeah. I would have <laughs> preferred I butter, honestly. I don't know. I don't know if they make mayonnaise out of seeds. When I got Vegemite on the knife, then I put the knife back in the margarine. And that was, <laughs> I can't, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars, exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you, how do you feel about this? I, I don't know. I think it's the early days. I like him. I like a lot of his work. Mm-hmm. I think like a lot of the animated stuff he's done is really good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And like for Ahsoka, I was like, some of this is really interesting and great. And others, I'm like, this is boring. Well, then I <laughs> guess the question there is, was the fact that some of that is boring, is that – well, I mean, is it on is it on us that some of that was boring because we're I'm not well, I, on on me certainly no, because I think I'm not some familiar people with the salad on it, mm-hmm. you know. And some people also don't like that a lot of what he's doing is just like, well, I made this person in, you know, in animated, and now they're live action, right? It's okay. becoming like his universe. I don't care because like you get that, you get Andor, you get Obi Wan, sure, you get, sure, sure. I mean, and they're all equally good. <laughs> yes, you that's get true. Book of Boba Fett. So you're saying that this you're you're largely indifferent to this? Yeah. As long as he keeps his grubby mitts off Andor? Yeah, exactly. Give me Andor season two and then shut it down. Uh-huh. Yeah, unless it's bad, in which case yeah. do season three. I guess the question then becomes, if he's the chief creative officer, is he is he a guy who is going to green light? Can he green light stuff? No, he's under Kathleen Kennedy. Okay, right. Yeah, so Sweet. which I know you love. Okay, well, then can he can – he, I imagine he can provide – recommendations yeah, and exactly, okay right yeah. so i guess the question then becomes is he a guy who is like i'm willing to you know i i like this idea or you're doing like a jedi hand i, am, that's I right. like this idea <laughs> give him a laser but not yet not yet <laughs> let people let the people wait for the laser his signature <laughs> laser um do you think that he's the kind of person who will say that that's a good idea it's not in my wheelhouse but i appreciate that other people have yeah. come up with that idea around or is he a guy who's like mm, doesn't really gel with my vision of yeah. like, all the stuff that i invented in, yeah in well the i mean Wars. I, I he's always had the opportunity to like veto stuff with cl- which clashes with him mm-hmm. but i'm hoping it's a situ- situation where like if you got like a tony gilroy who's like i want to do this version yeah. of star wars he'll be like yep do it yeah. like that's what i'm hoping for yeah. where you can still get creative voices coming in and doing something that's not just Look at these animated characters; they're real now, or whatever. Yeah. Which I'm also fine with. Star Wars is a mixed bag, and it always it has sure, been, that and is it very always true, yes. will be. And that's why I love it. But or, also, or it I might hate be, it. Yeah, or it might become worse. <laughs> yeah, like, whatever. Worse. It's fine, man. Like, who cares? Yeah. Let things get worse, and then they have to make something new. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do a new thing. Yeah. For once. Stargerine. Stargerine. Wargerine. Why Wa- is that like wild? Star Wars. Margarine. <laughs> okay. But also. <laughs> Well, Luigi, yes. Yes, sure. Okay. Great. We're just working on these ideas until they become just- Star Wars movies. Star Wars movies, yes. Because that fly, Mason, that goddamn fly. There is a fly in here, that's true. Yeah, it's been in here for a long time. It's really throwing my game off. Okay. When you say a long time, do you mean today or do you mean for years? No, for this segment. I have to talk- There, it's gone. I'll quickly close the door. I'm yelling because I realise when I'm away from the mic, Mm. it's not very- doesn't sound very good. So that we, was a smooth transition you, back that, to normal speaking that voice as well. Really good. Yeah. Mason, Go are on. you a fan of all the Karate Kid movies slash TV show and also the Jaden Smith version? No. Then you're in luck, my friend. Nice. Well, sorry, you were in luck previously because I think they weren't doing this, but now you're out of luck because they're doing something which incorporates all of those things. Oh, nuts. Yeah, if this was last week, you were, you were in luck, mate. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you that. Just much. living in my ignorance, <laughs> sort of liking some Karate Kid stuff, just in my easy chair. Exactly. Yeah. So walking around Charlie Brown style in the neighborhood. <laughs> Stop walking around Charlie Bri- Brown style. You're going to get invited to too many podcasts. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio are teaming up for a Karate Kid movie. Mm-hmm. Now it's interesting because they both trained different Karate Kids. That's true. Though I think Jackie Chan one taught Kung Fu or something maybe. Well, yeah, it wasn't that I did, neither of us saw the. Jayden I did. Smith one. Did you? Yeah. Huh. Well, wasn't the joke that he was called the Karate Kid? Like, didn't 
wasn't it the other mm. kids mocked him and called him the karate yeah. kid? But Jackie Chan would teach him kung fu because that's yeah. the martial arts Jackie Chan is famous exactly. for. Yeah, and whatever country they were in probably for that mm. movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so Jackie Chan's character, you might think, it was Mr. Miyagi. No, his name was Mr. Han. And Ralph Macchio's character, you might think his name is Mr. Miyagi, but no, his name's Danny LaRusso. Interesting. And they're going to team up and... I thought that whole franchise was really... Oddly racist, but <laughs> no, no. I mean, it is. But, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a good way. In a, in a way that the Netflix show can poke fun at. That's now. terrific. Um, so they also announced a global search to find a young actor to play the main protagonist of the upcoming film. So uh, they're looking for a b- brand new Karate Kid. They're looking for the next Karate Kid, but not Hilary Swank. What about one of those? Karate kid. What about one of those? Just really upsettingly buff, like ten year old Eastern European. Kids I hate you see those in videos. Kids. I don't. And they're like, all like, and they're lifting barbells, and you're like, what? Is Break, this Photoshop? What's yeah. going on? I hate this. Breaking cinder blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Could be one of those kids, yeah. Right, yeah. No, it'll be a skinny nerd who can do a spin kick or a crane kick. I understand, sure. Now, in terms of continuity, like the, the Karate Kid continuity is kind of wild now on Netflix. And okay. Everybody's come back and everybody's fighting each other in okay. a tournament all the time. Has Hillary Swank come back? I don't think so as of yet. Okay. But I think they're going to kind of brush over a lot of that and I just be like... I haven't seen Hilary Swank in anything in a long time. Is she retired, maybe? No, she was in that movie where, like, they could have put all the people on the on the island and made them shoot each other or whatever recently, and that was, like, controversial, but it was, like, not that controversial. Oh. What was it called? <laughs> no idea. Well, Wikipedia says American actress and film producer, so I guess she's producing mostly now. She better be. Mm. She better be Mason. The Hunt, was it yeah, called? Yeah, it was called The Hunt, yeah, okay. which I didn't mind, right? Um, actually. But there was, like, all this controversy about, like, hey, this is broken fun or whatever, but it's like, oh, not really. Yeah. Oh, Logan Lucky, that's the last thing I remember her from. Ah. That was 2017. My goodness. That was last year. Why isn't she doing a karate kid? <laughs> Why isn't she doing a karate kid? I'm just looking. Mm-hmm. Nah, she hasn't done a karate kid yet. Okay. So there you go. Um, so, yeah, why not more karate kids? Sure. I stopped watching that show last season, season mm-hmm. before. But not by choice. Uh, I just stopped, and I think Netflix okay. stopped putting it up yeah. in front of me. Sure. Do you think we'll get a Jaden Smith cameo? Potentially. Do you think other things? I think a lot of things. We're going to cover all the bases. We're going to cover all the things you think, apparently. Okay. Oh, you said it, not <laughs> me. Who's <laughs> James telling us everybody what he thinks? Yeah, this is what the show is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've set up a podcast where I tell people what I think about pop culture. Yeah. Brr. Yes. Oh, I got my friend Meso involved. Oh. That's how it happens. Oh, it's, it's like a job for him now and he gets paid for it. Oh, look it's, at me. Is that me or you? I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh. Yes. That's great, what actually. What did you think it was? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So have they? So they've have they established it? How much? How much of Cobra Kai have you watched? Probably the first three or four seasons. However okay. many there are. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Has there ever been any indication that the Jackie Chan Jaden Smith universe is part so. of this the regular universe? I always just assume that. I mean, I wouldn't have when I saw it, but he was just like Mr. Miyagi again. Yeah, right. But he's uh-huh. obviously not. He's obviously not. Yeah, it's got some pretty good martial arts in it. That one as well. Yeah, and right. Jackie Chan actually, he does as a scene where he's like. He's drunk and I don't think he's really drunk, but he's talking about his wife who passed away. He's, he's actually uh-huh. really good in it. Um, okay. And there's a scene where he also beats up a bunch of like 10 year olds. Nice, good. And that's fun too. It's <laughs> not those muscular Eastern European No, no, ten-year-olds. just regular 10 year olds. Well, some of them, know, they all know Kung Fu, but yeah, it's right. uh, whatever. But it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it's fun. Okay. And both of us believe it's fun. And look, obviously, what's going to happen is they're just, they're just going to meet by chance, maybe at a karate tournament, Jackie Chan and, and, uh, yeah, the other, the other guy. guy, Ralph Macchio. Ralph Macchio. Mm. But uh, I, in my heart of hearts, I would like there to be portals. <laughs> sure. You know? Multiverse. Maybe at a karate tournament. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, why would Jackie Chan be at a karate tournament with a kung fu guy? It's a great point. Yeah. It's a lot to think about. Well, in his dimension, they're kung fu tournaments. Oh, they? okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess there is. And I think Ralph Macchio mm-hmm. and Jackie Chan in their respective universes will do a punch on their opponents so big yeah. at the same time it'll breach the dimensional barriers. Damn. And then they're actually punching themselves. And they're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's et cetera. Yeah, so he's yeah, in yeah. Spider-Man. You basically yeah, he's talking about yeah. making that Spider-Man movie, but yeah. with these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Sounds really good. Thanks, man. Yeah. Do you and think, that's what I think. So this week also we had John Woo saying, because John Woo's doing uh, Silent Night, he's directed the new oh, yeah, action the movie coming out Joel for Christmas. Kinnaman. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, they had to ask him the superhero question. He's Always. Like, and he's like, no, no, I like superhero movies or whatever. And people are like, this pretentious, <laughs> this guy. You know? I love it. Yeah. This this art house director of the movie Hard Boiled. 
Bro- face off. Yeah, face off. Broken Arrow. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Paycheck. Wow. Yeah, all wow. good movies. Stop reading from the works of Shakespeare, James. <laughs> Let's talk about the work of... I don't know. But I, I'm just excited for, again, Jack, they're going to ask Jackie Chan about superhero movies and he's yeah. going to be like, I don't see him. They're going to be like, how dare you? Is he in one? I don't know. Let me check. I reckon he's probably in like some sort of pre-superhero thing. Well, he was in like, I mean, he essentially is, but he did like the tuxedo where he's like a James Oh, of course. That's probably, yeah, 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 you're right. I was in Mutant Mayhem. There you go. Oh, of course he is. He's Splinter, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kung Fu Panda. Is he in that? Oh, yeah, he's one of the, is he one of the animals? <laughs> No, he's just regular Jackie Chan. Oh, what's he doing there? He's then? just wandering around. Yeah, he's like, I can't eat this animated food. It doesn't work in myself. I'm trapped here. I'm starving. <laughs> did he punch into the dimension? Yeah, he? he did. Yeah, okay, he punched right. into the dimension again, like the spot of our movie. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. This is by the New York Times. Uh, this is in, this is a there was a series that was coming to Netflix called Conquest, mm. and it was the it was going to be the director of uh, who made one movie. It's called 47 Ronin with Keanu Reeves. I well, I mean, it. with that track record, I mean, if he's getting a Netflix show, it must be a well-reviewed movie I have generally. seen it, and it's not. Mm. Well, I barely remember it. I didn't think it was that bad from okay. memory. But Rotten Tomatoes says 16%. Yeah, right? not great. But uh, anyway, so his name is Carl Eric Rinsk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, he was given $55 million by Netflix to create this new sci-fi series, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, and the show uh-huh. was originally going to be a 13-episode run with an initial budget of $44 million. And then in 2010... He requested an additional eleven million uh, pound. It says here as well. So, okay, but it, so it says dollars and then pounds. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Where have I got this from? But um, the filmmaker allegedly blew ten point five million dollars from the show's twenty twenty funding round on stocks, eventually <laughs> losing five point nine million. He then pivoted to cryptocurrency, allegedly using four million to buy up Dogecoin. Love that Dogecoin. This guy knows what he's doing. Oh, he loves those meme coins. Yeah, my god. The director, director nearly turned this into twenty-seven million. Then reportedly proceeded to spend eight point <laughs> seven million on sports cars and des- designer goods. That's pretty good. Nice, that's that doing is all good. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but Netflix had to spend that money to make that money. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very true. Yeah. But Netflix though had didn't receive a single episode of the series, and it was recently cancelled. Like a bunch of stuff has been recently cancelled, mm, so sure, it's kind sure, of sure. got lost in the shuffle. He could have got away with this. Yeah. So a Netflix spokesperson, Thomas Cherian, came out and said this. While the company provided funding and support for Rinsk's series, uh, after a lot of time and effort, it became clear that uh, Mr. Rinsk was never going to complete the project he agreed to make. Mm. Uh, but here's a fun twist, Mason. Go on. Netflix and Rinsk are now locked into a confidential arbitration that was initiated by the director himself. <laughs> he says that Netflix owes him $14 million in damages for breach of contract. Oh, this is great Presumably uh, cancelling the series. You don't often see things like this, this Mason. No. Just a man openly stealing money. I mean, maybe <laughs> it's happening a, on every I Netflix mean, I, there's production. definitely like productions where you, you know, you, money screw. You look at, I think even Red Letter Media did a video on it, but like Adam Sandler gets $50 million for a movie and then takes all these friends to Hawaii. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Buys them all sports cars and then they film it in a pool or whatever. <laughs> you know? That's right. Which I have no problem yeah. with. Let me just clarify. I can't remember who said it. it was. I think it was, it was, it was, it was a, like, a, like an old school Hollywood celebrity, I think, who's on Twitter. Maybe like, Steve Martin or something like that. Sure. I don't know who it was. But they were like, somebody Somebody asked him why, maybe it was a producer, but they were like, somebody's like, why are all these Why are these movies all $100 million? And, and they were like, well, you can't steal a million dollars out of a $10 million shoot, can you? Yeah. But for $100 million, okay. you can, and pe- uh, people won't notice. Kind Absolutely. Of thing. Or um, you can invest a bunch of it in Dogecoin. In Dogecoin. Uh, his, I wonder if he's up. Like, like I wonder if he made like he's still up, like yeah. he's well in the green from this. Some of the some of the other fascinating. So this is from the was this was the New York, New York Times? Times. Yeah, yeah. Here's some other fascinating things. Um, oh, look at Mr. Subscription to New York Times over exactly here. Right. Must be nice. So it says Mr. Rinch financed the production with his own money at first and hired mostly European actors and crew members, which reduced costs and avoided Hollywood union rules. Mamma mia. The earlier shoots followed punishing schedules. During a shoot in Kenya, Mr. Rinch reportedly insisted on filming for 24 hours straight. In Romania, the lead actress caught hypothermia doing a scene bare-legged in the snow and had to be rushed to a hospital. Jesus. To keep the project going, he secured investment from 30, from 30 West and Keanu Reeves, who came on as a producer because he was in 47, 47 Ronin. Ronin. Uh, Rinch finished editing six short episodes ranging from four to ten minutes. Okay. He used them to pitch the big streaming companies on a 13-episode, 120-minute first season. Ooh, wait, 120 minutes? Yeah. First season? That's what, but that's, I, this is, so 13 episodes, 120 minutes. So like 13 10-minute episodes? Yeah. Love it. 
There's also saying a lot. That's a web series. There's also, he's got some other behaviors. I'm going to find this other. He's got some other behaviors? Oh, he's got some other behaviors, my friend. This guy, this guy. He's your mate, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And you endorse him? Yeah. This guy. Uh, Okay, right. Soon after he signed the contract, Mr. Rich's behavior grew erratic, according to members of the show's cast and crew, texts and emails revealed by the New York Times, and court filings in a divorce case brought by his wife. He claimed to have discovered COVID-19 secret transmission mechanism and to be able to predict lightning strikes. Wow, did, is that true, though? Did he really? Yeah, he least... did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's never been struck by lightning, has he? Predicted it. Yep, that's mm. right. Anyway, pretty good, right? Yeah, that is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he's fine? Uh, While Mr. Rinch declined to respond to a detailed list of questions, in a recent Instagram post, he said he did not cooperate with the Times because he expected the article to be inaccurate. He predicted that it would, quote, discuss the fact that I somehow lost my mind. I did not. Sounds like he didn't. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And who said that again? Netflix said he didn't lose his mind. Yeah, everybody said (laughs) he didn't lose his mind. Everybody's very confident he did not. Lose his mind. He's looking good though. He's got a good. He's got a good. He's got, he's a, got a good look to him. He's got an onset look. He's wearing a waistcoat. Yeah, that's cool. He's got a ponytail. Good. A ponytail. Looks like a sabra tooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd give him fifty million dollars or whatever. You reckon you would? I mean, I don't have it. But. I mean, now even off the back of hearing all this, would you give him fifty million dollars just to see what he'd do with it? Yeah, yeah just to see if you can make ten minute episodes, well, sort yep. of. or see if you can make ten million dollars out of that fifty million dollars. <laughs> Is it my money? No, it's Netflix's money. Yeah, you can have it. <laughs> Great stuff. Should we be Napoleon? Yeah. Wow. Oh, 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 everybody. Oh, no. You don't like stereotypes? I love them. You love stereotypes. I love them when they're true. Yeah, exactly. And the French, let me tell you. Boy, do they. Wonderful. Wonderful people. Mm-hmm. Wonderful place. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, actually, genuinely. Me too. Yeah. Uh, Mason, we're going to talk about Napoleon. Yes. Big movie of the week. That's right. Uh, we're not doing Trolls 3, unfortunately. Oh, I'll come back to that next year. I didn't year. even know Trolls 3 was out. It was out. Oh, it's not out? I can't remember. Right. But it might be out. Mm. Um, but look, on a budget of... Between 130 and 200 million dollars. Okay. All right. It's through right. Apple as well. This uh-huh. is going to be an Apple streaming situation. Okay. So similarly to Killers of the Flower Moon. So we could have stayed home. Not yet, because it's not out yet. Right. Uh, the box office in the US uh, alone is looking to hit about 36 million dollars, which is not terrible. Um, but it's it's fine. It's like yeah. but Killers of the Flower Moon, like I think it did a bit less than this, but then it like bottomed out. And right, right, right. It's. I mean, I like that movie a lot, but it's almost certainly lost them a bunch of money. Sure, but and I mean, the, Apple don't seem to be in this for care. the money. They don't give a yeah. shit. They are. They, they want are. premium movies. They want prestige. Mm. They want that prestige that you know, you can only get from a Martin Scorsese, exactly, or Ridley Scott. <laughs> you know, Ridley Scott. That's right. He's back. Yeah. He's one hundred and ten years old, and he's still going at he's it. He's not. He's eighty-five. Yep. And he is. Um, <laughs> he's the diametric opposite of Martin Scorsese because Scorsese is all like, "Oh, I've got so many regrets, and I don't have a lot of time left, and I don't know what I can." Don't know what I can do left, and I don't know. I don't know if I've made the right choices in the films that I've made in my life. And Ridley Scott's like, I made four movies in between you making Flower Moon. I made four movies. I'll, I'll make a million movies. I'll never die. Are any of them good? I didn't watch them back. I yeah, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. If they're bad, it was the writer's fault. Well, I think oftentimes with Ridley Scott movies, that is the case because mm. I think in terms of the way that the, like, his movies look and are directed, uh-huh. they're all very good. Yeah. Like from that perspective. I mean, you might be like Prometheus is dumb. What a dumb movie. Sure, sure, but sure. it fucking looks good, doesn't it? Sure does, yeah. Um, anyway, what do you think the story oh, was? Oh, come on, mate. It's Napoleon it time. It is. It's, yeah, it's Napoleon time. It's Napoleon it's time. It's Napoleon time, everybody. <laughs> Give him a moment. <laughs> it's, look, it's Napoleon. Let Napo- him spread his little wings. That's exactly right. It's Napoleon time. And very fortunately, Napoleon's alive in Napoleon time. Mm-hmm. And he's going to – he's and that, it's his time to shine. Yeah. It's Napoleon time for Napoleon to shine. Yeah. And, he's, and he'll tell you all about it. That's right. And so we, we get – I wouldn't say a snapshot of his life because it spends many, many, many years. Probably like 40 years but maybe. It's, it's, oh, a, no, it's, a, it's a series of snapshots and it's like we, you can't – A series of battles and – Yeah, you can't – you could not – I don't think you could encapsulate the entire life of Napoleon in – no. It's three hour, even even in three hours. Yeah. Um, also, didn't mind the length on this one. Yeah. It felt like, yeah, this is a good three hours. Uh-huh. I'm enjoying this wildly inaccurate movie where nobody is doing any accents. Is Everybody's that- <laughs> British. Really confusing, by the way. Sometimes it was. where there? is anybody from? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you didn't feel it this time because it didn't feel like there was an additional movie tacked onto the. Oh, that's true. At the end of it, yeah. The last and I'm hour. like, I know they got to do Waterloo and Second Exile. I know that's what's right. coming. That's right. I know what's coming. That's right. Anyway, so it's Napoleon times, and it's mm. his life and his loves. Ooh. And I tell you what, Mason. So a, a large portion of this movie is dedicated to the love of his, him, and the love of his life, whose name Josephine is Josephine Bonaparte. Yeah. And what we really get here is a snapshot of a man who. Just a beautiful, well-rounded individual who's 
Just a wonderful love maker. You mean a grub? <laughs> He's a real ratty little grub. <laughs> Humping away. <laughs> that's what he is. <laughs> what did you? No, that's normal. Oh, he's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <It's> normal. <laughs> um, um, I mean, there's a bit of uproar because they're like, You've kind of made him into a joke in a buffoon and he sucks and he, he makes love badly and his wife hates him and well, whatever. Well, guess what? He's dead. Who cares? He's dead and like, you know what? He probably did fucking suck. He's been dead for <laughs> hundreds of years. It's fine. All of these guys are They awful. all did, yeah. <laughs> and again, like, I can only assume that the, because, you know, we cover his kind of his his personal life, but we also cover like the battles that he. Yeah, that some he, of them. That he, com- that he commanded and he participated in and all that sort of stuff. And assuming that those are accurate. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a good guy. No, okay, okay. I do have a list of inaccuracies, which we will okay. get to, because a lot of this, it's wildly inaccurate. And Ridley Scott was like questioned on this and he said something like, look, I don't care, like, because the French didn't like this. And a lot of the French, and he said the French don't even like themselves. Like, he doesn't give a fuck, like, <laughs> at all. It does feel like he does not like Napoleon. Yeah, right. Because, you know, I feel like with, like, Gladiator, mm-hmm. even though Gladiator is also, like, wildly inaccurate, so much of, but it's, but that's kind of like a time period where people are like, I don't know, Emperor Commodus, who the fuck is that? Like, who cares? Yeah, right, uh-huh. Like, who's Maximus? Whatever. Emperor Commodius, more like Emperor like, Toilet. Well, you know, got him. Um... But with this, like, people know Napoleon, you know. Also, I haven't seen this, but I, I want to watch it. I haven't had time. He did a movie in 1977 called The Duelist, okay. which is set during the Napoleonic era. Oh. And apparently it's got really, really, like, it's got, like, um, what's his name? Uh, Habi Keitel. Oh. It's got really accurate, like, period accurate, like, swordsmanship in that. Oh, I see, right. very good, so I might okay. check that out. So, so do you, do you yeah. is it perhaps that that was not as well received or people have forgotten? Oh, like, people I'll like do, it. I'll do what I want now. I think that's more just, like, sword fighting and this is, like, battles right. and cannons okay. and Let's talk about his – because, like, he was a master tactician of his day. We (laughs) talked about this, right? But they do not display that here at all. I'm not saying that he isn't. He probably was. But, like, a lot of the stuff he does here is just like, yeah, just put the cannon there. Yep. I brought more cannons, I think, or more cannonballs. Yeah, the those, that, those guys actually didn't even think to bring cannons at all. <laughs> so. They're just running at me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it is a lot of just like he shot cannons better than other people because mm-hmm. that's his thing. I mean, that's everybody's thing in this era. Yeah. You send your troops in on foot, you send your horses in, you shoot cannons, and you do that in whatever order on whatever terrain, mm-hmm. and that's how you, according to this movie at least. Until you run out of soldiers. Yeah, exactly. And then you are a brave general. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I did like because he does a few of the battles himself, like he's involved. Like uh-huh. the first one he does in particular, you see him, he's like scared and whatever. He's like, oh, I'm scared, but he's, he's still in there. He's still among it with That's his true, brother yeah. and whatever. Mm. And there is a moment where he's wearing his hat straight forward and he yeah. goes, hang on a minute. Turns it sideways. <laughs> that's right. And that's how you know he's arrived. That's right. You, know? you better believe it. Now, well, he would have gotten there on his horse. Oh, yeah. And it would yeah. have been streamlined for, for horse riding and then he would have turned it for wind resistance. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like Joaquin Phoenix in this, but I think a the, a problem with this movie is that, like, nobody's really speaking French, as I mentioned, or, like, doing accents uh-huh. and any of that. So I did find it kind of like, you don't want to, like, just throw in some, any just any of that at any point. You know, it's just everybody's British. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This whole yeah, but that's movie. the general, like, uh, I know, but the like, general historical accent. I know British, that. But, like, you know? when, you, when you're, when you like, intermingling, like, other countries. Yeah. They're all British? Yeah, but I, I also, th- like, because if you, I don't know. Because people would have different interpretations of, say, the French accent, you know, did the, all the different actors would. And so yeah. at a certain point you'd be like... I mean, Joaquin Phoenix could do it, though. Yeah, of course he could, yeah. He could definitely do I it. I guess you could you could have him come in and be do the French accent and, and Ridley Scott could be like, okay, everybody model yours off his. Yeah, okay. Kind of thing, you know? How much do you think of his rise to power is like right place, right time, and how much was... I mean, because somebody's got to get to the top. That's true. Like when there's a revolution, mm-hmm. somebody eventually becomes like the leader. Yeah, right? that's true. Like, how much do you think is just Not like, in my revolution, everybody no. would be equal. Oh, that's great. Yeah, isn't it Except nice? you'd be the leader. Yeah, yeah, because I'm the most enlightened one. Because yeah. I came up with the you idea that, that everybody would be equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd, I'd be at the top, though. It, ma- it makes me wonder, like, it's like that idea that, you know, like master, like like gunsmen, you know what I mean? Uh, like, uh, what are they called? Like <laughs> cowboy boys, you know? Yep. That's it, cowboy boys. It's like this guy's the best. Gunslingers. Yeah, this guy's the best gunslinger. But, like, statistically, somebody has to be. Somebody has right. missed a certain amount of times and got lucky a certain amount of times, and there's a certain amount of skill involved. Uh-huh. And like, and I felt this like for this movie of like, 
He kind of winged a bunch of this. Are you trying to moneyball Napoleon, James? Is that what's happening here? (laughs) This version, at least. Okay, right. Uh, Also, I did enjoy this. Like, I thought it was pretty funny as well. It is funny, yeah. yeah. It's funny. I think the battle sequences are really well staged and they're kind of brutal. Yeah, I think they are some of the time, but I think a lot of the close-up hand-to-hand stuff. There's nothing in here that I... Like, I think back at Gladiator. Okay. And there's, like, multiple battles in that I could point to. Because uh-huh. really, Scott, of course, if people don't know, directed Gladiator. Like, the opening one in the snow. Uh-huh. The bit where, like, they're fighting in the pit and there's, like, the tigers on chains and whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. The bit at the end where he fights Joaquin Phoenix and he's been, like, stabbed. Oh. And it's it's a fucking incredible movie. As Napoleon. Yeah, as Napoleon. Yeah. Wow. He has a time machine. Yeah. Um, and that's all... Good. Wait, which one has a time machine? They both have time oh, machines. Time machine, they meet in the middle. Maximus doesn't need it. He's already there, but he yeah. has one. Yeah. But he's already in the right time <laughs> yeah, period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Like, I love all of that, but I felt like there was nothing really in here that I went, oh, that's... What about that? There's a point as... quite early on where a horse gets shot by a cannonball. Okay, that bit and was it cool. really Boy, did it really get shot it by really, a cannonball. really, like, it's not one of those things where you see the, the cannon fire and there's smoke and a horse falls over. No. Like, the, the horse cops the a cannonball right in it and it's twitching on the way. It's Napoleon's horse and yeah. it like, twitches all the way down. Horrendous. Yeah. And he loves that horse. And he, he didn't love that happening because the horse fell on him a little bit. Mm. And he was scared. I wouldn't be scared. Interesting. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Um, I'm built differently. I wouldn't be there in the first place because no? I'm enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> that's good too. Yeah. But you felt there was this kind of epic scale to the yeah, I, to yeah, the battles absolutely, and the yeah, scenery and yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, and when his cannons got stuck in the mud, et cetera, and yeah, so yeah. forth. Yeah, uh, but I also thought the supporting cast was really good. Yeah, sure. Vanessa Kirby's a great, uh, She's really good. Josephine, yeah. really yep. good. Uh, Rupert Everett, Rupert Everett, as here. the Duke of Wellington. Here he is. is. What's he doing uh, here? Just this. He's got this. Is this? He's got this constant jowly smirk so that I love. Jowly and smirky. Just, just oh. mm, ah, <laughs> just, uh, yeah. just a just a jaded, just a jaded, awful man. Absolutely. A, you know, he's seen Napoleon's come and go, and he's like, "Here's it's another fun. one." Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> now I wanted to defer to you for this, mm-hmm. but in terms of costuming, yes, is this something that you? Uh, I mean, this is not my era, James. No, I'm, I know. I, I wasn't alive then. I know it's not your era, Mason. Okay, go on. I know you're not 200 years old, Mason. Even if he bloody looks at him, I right, everybody. Oh, my, come but, on, um, mate, mate, come on, mate. Apparently one of the things that everybody agrees on this, oh, the, apparently that also that's Napoleon's subreddit is a fucking nightmare. I people bet it is, hate yeah. this. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you go to like r slash movies, people are like, yeah, it's pretty whatever, yeah, you know. that's um, right. I never met Napoleon, I don't care. It's no alien covenant. But I have a time machine, but I don't use it, so. <laughs> well, would I? Why would I mess with any of that? That's right. Too responsible. Yeah, yeah. Number one rule of r slash movies is you don't mess with the timeline. <laughs> Even if you have a time machine. <laughs> Anyway, I liked all their funny little clothing yeah. and their trims and their, oh, absolutely. their golden lapels. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I think his earlier his earlier outfits are the better ones. Yeah, these grubbier outfits before mm. he emperor's not up. even grubbier, but like he's got he's got like a like a waistcoat. He's got a couple of velvet coats and they have Ooh. like kind of embroidered collars. And he's got a navy one and he's got a like a burgundy one. Yeah, it's yeah. tremendous. I don't think he's I don't think he's like later era. And that's probably just the evolution of those French military uniforms. But I don't think they were as flattering. Okay. Yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. If you if you're just in it for Napoleonic era fashion, just leave it the hour and a half mark. I oh, say. really? Yeah, just leave. I want to go just beyond leave. that though. I want to. Uh, can I stay for the end of the movie? No. But I'm curious. No, it's not. <laughs> just don't. No, just don't though. Oh God. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I I I thought the, the the relationship between him and his wife was kind of that was a very. I mean, that's like the key of the whole movie, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Woven, like yeah, yeah, throughout. Yeah. I thought that was. A, you know, an interesting meeting and just like what an awful pair that should break up. <laughs> That's right. You know? And, yeah, and the, I mean there's um, there was also, you know, moments. This in version the, at least. Yeah, there were moments in this movie where it's like, oh, why are you doing that or whatever? And I'm like, oh, because that's actually what happened. Yeah. You know? There is stuff like that that, <laughs> that's right. that happened. Um, mm. Do you want to do some historical inaccuracies? Uh, yes. What else can I uh, – no, I just the, I think this – like I say this all the time, but I liked all the supporting cast. I yeah. like the uh, – there's some good faces in there. Yeah. There's uh, Kevin Eldon who's a um, – a British comedian, he played. He oh, played the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's, he's in he's, he's in, in a like, bunch of I want to say black he might be in black books for a time. But yeah. he might not actually be in he's in Big Train. There we he go. He's in Big Train. He's in a yeah. bunch of stuff, yeah. yeah. He's he's taking it seriously now, isn't he? Well it seems that way. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure but I mean that's you know, that is the trajectory. It's like um Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. He was in set. he was in uh Knowing Me, Knowing You with Alan Partridge, Big yep. Train, Brass Eye. He was in the TV show Merlin. Yeah, yeah. These are all good things. He was in Game of Thrones, apparently. Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. What the hell? Mm. Oh, he's in Shadow and Bone, recently cancelled. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Also Julian Rind Tut, who I who was in he was in Hippies with um Simon Pegg many years ago. Okay. Uh, and he was also in Keen Eddie, which is a, 
a a cop show where an American cop has to go to has to go to England. Does he like it? No, he hates it. It's Ryan Tut. Yes. Who is this guy? Let me googs this guy. Give him Googs. a Give him a Googs. You recognize when you when you see him. You'll be like, oh yeah, of course I know this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I I, I think. I enjoyed like all the weird betrayals, uh-huh, weird sure. things that really happen. You meet with somebody and you're like, "Let's go to our armies together. Let's all get. Let's all make our families marry each other." Uh-huh, and uh-huh. then they're like, "This guy just sent a hundred thousand troops to me. That's really rude." He said he wouldn't. He did it. But also just like the cavalier nature, of just like these horrible fucking people. And again, this happened throughout history. Just killing millions, yeah. mm-hmm. just on a whim. For like for nothing, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. stay in your country. Yeah. Why are you do? Why are you marching around? Why are you marching into Russia? What are you doing? Yeah. Silly. Silly. And it turned out to be silly. You shouldn't cold. have done it. Silly and cold. Silly and cold. Mm. Um. Yeah. Let's do some spoilers. Look, I don't think it's really. They should have printed T-shirts for the occasion that said, "I'm with Silly and Cold." <laughs> An arrow, and all the arrows pointed to Napoleon. Oh my God! Yeah, that's right. Adjustable arrows you could point to Napoleon. That's right. Or it's a compass. I don't know. No, Napoleon has a big magnet on him. Yeah, and nice, arrows, great. The tip oh, then of the they arrow. Don't, then they don't have to adjust while they're doing their exactly. battle. Exactly, because they're too busy being hit with cannons. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say best movie ever. I don't think it's like Ridley Scott's best. I think I can understand why you don't like this. I just thought it was pretty interesting and pretty funny. It um, is. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. He's <laughs> Napoleon when he wants to. Have relations with his wife. Yeah. He does a thing where he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, baby. <laughs> what a weirdo. Which might be true. Might be. Well, here's the thing as well. Like on the poster, there is a there's a big writing credit for David Scarpa. It's like directed by Ridley Scott, and then okay. it says from a screen the screenplay is David Scarpa. And I'm like, there's very rarely that much emphasis on the writer, I think, in a in a, any any kind of movie like this. And yeah, yeah. Either, and I'm just like, is 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 this guy? Is it in his contract that he's that he's on the posters or what have you? Or is or is Ridley Scott throwing him under the bus? Because <laughs> he's like, I know there's going to be some, I know there's going like, to be historical inaccuracies, and and I know people are get, I'm going to get flack for it. But if I just go look, I just I just film what the writer did. Yeah, absolutely. Because he did the last castle, the day the earth stood still, the remake. Okay. All the money in the world. Oh yeah. This movie, and he wrote Gladiator Two. Ah, oh, the first Gladiator Two or New Gladiator Two? It says twenty twenty four Gladiator Two. New Gladiator Two. Gladiator Two. Yeah. Oh my god. So, can't I don't wait. know, man. I can't wait to Gladiator Two with you. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's do some spoilers. So I guess in terms of spoilers, if you know anything about his life, he gets he gets exiled because he went into um Russia. Yep. And he shouldn't have. That's right. And they burnt down the Russia. And he's like, oh, he, this sucks. And also he got like half a million people killed. He, oh, yeah, he killed like half, half a million, million of his own soldiers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And they don't like him. And then he um, – so he comes back and he does a big battle of Waterloo, but it rains, so he loses. That's right. Because he can't also, move his cannons. Well, he comes, he, he's exiled to an island. Yeah. And it seems very nice. Elba. It looks like it looks like a nice Greek island. It looks sure. delightful. Eat some olives. Eat some olives. Have a, have a, have a brunch. Have a piñata. Have a bruschetta. Eat a piñata. Eat a piñata. Eat a bruschetta. <laughs> Um, but then he's like, no, I'm, 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 I'm bored and I'm horny and I want to go back and see Josephine or whatever. Yeah, man. Who I've previously broken up with because she couldn't give me a child. Yep. And then he goes back and then the soldiers are like, the, the, the army is like, you can't, you can't, uh, can't come in here. Can't come in here. And then he's We're not like, doing Napoleon right now. That's exactly right. But then he's like, who's with me to do a Napoleon soldiers? And they're like, we're all with you. And it's like, you got half a million of them killed. Crazy. Why are they on your side? But yeah. again, it was the past and it actually happened. So yeah. Yeah. It's it's wild. I mean, presumably the people that sided with him forgot, <laughs> and they lived. Yeah, it was survivorship bias. They're like, oh, that... we well, we lived. I also liked how his hairline was receding, and he increasingly like come to forward. Pushed it forward. Sure. <laughs> Love that, yeah. Mason. Anyway, then he gets exiled again. Then he dies. Yeah, he gets um, exiled to an old rock. Yeah, which... I reckon I would have said. Don't exile me to an old rock. No, what I would have said is Rupert Everett, please. I would have said I would. They would have exiled me to the nice island. Yeah, and I would have said just hypothetically, if I were to come back and do a big rebellion and attempt to like a yeah. coup, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do it. But to be clear, would you exile me to a nicer island or a worse island? Would you exile me even harder? Yeah, or not as much. That's right. And but by the way, you're not allowed to shoot me. Yeah, <laughs> you have to exile me because I'm rich. Yeah. Oh my, oh my god! You know what? I, the, the money. Yeah. The thought I had was like, man, I would love to be exiled because they give you two million francs a year. I mean, you have to and do this. servants and whatever, yeah. and you just you just get you get to chill in Greece or whatever. Oh my and God. in like what was it like eighteen twenty or whenever he was exiled, getting a million dollars a year yeah. francs, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 
That's ins- what an insane amount of right? money. All you had to do was just wander, have the bruschetta, yeah. hit a pinata, as we mentioned. <laughs> Look, man, they should have fucking shot him. Yeah. Like, sure <laughs> but they didn't, and that's the beauty of historical <laughs> dramas. It actually happened, and it was stupid. His people were stupid then. They were. Now and they're not stupid. Let's run at these cannons. Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, I went to uh, his- historyextra.com. Okay. And there's some and that's a reliable website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th- this is some. It I sounds should... like it's, it's suggesting to me that it's like his- like extra stuff. We've just added on to history. No, no, this is real. Okay. We'll it's well slash on. real. The oh, website. great. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. great. So here's some of them. Yep. This is not all of them. So you know how he says like he came from nothing because he's Corsican, he's not actually French or whatever. Okay, right. Uh, he's actually from minor nobility and that gave him the initial leg up. He's um, a Nepo baby. Of course right? he is, That's yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Father you know, owned an emerald mine. Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Pockets filled with emeralds. You know the time that he fired into the crowd? Yes. Um, and it was like a lot of like women and children or whatever was uh-huh. depicted sure, being sure, there. Sure. Apparently it wasn't just that. There were also soldiers and well-armed militia, though he did do that. Okay, he right. did point blank fire cannons. So this it. is the point because the, he he had essentially taken over and there were like yeah. royalists who were, who were objecting do to it. his, yeah, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so actually I wouldn't say to be more sympathetic, but it wasn't just, in the movie it's just no. women and children basically. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And civilians, yeah. And civilians, yeah. But he, uh, yeah, and so that's the thing that he did, which is the thing he often did, fire cannons into people. Right. But better than anybody else. Yeah, that's so true. Um, he didn't fire on the pyramids. There's a moment where he's having a mm. battle there and he shoots it into the pyramids and the oh. rocks fall down. Everyone goes, woo! Um, well, then how the, pyra- well, the pyramids fall down? It's I great. ask you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Was it aliens again? Yeah. We're coming back to take it back to the top of our pyramids. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so the battle itself actually took place about seven miles away from the pyramids themselves, well outside effective artillery range for the period. Hmm. Also, he's depicted as, I would say, quite short in this, not super short. There's a moment where he has to stand on a box to talk to a mummy. Oh, that's right, of course. And they're, they're, I, they, they were very effective with camera angles in terms of like there's moments where he's walking through the, the royal court or what have yeah, you yeah. and everybody seems taller than yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, but he was he was 5'6", which was like standard back At then. At the time, right. Yeah, so that's pretty cool how tall he was. That um, is very cool. Now the moment – n- A normal height king. Yes. <laughs> there was a moment where – it's, it's All one- praise our normal height king. <laughs> yes, I am normal. <laughs> height. Mm. But I'm not normal in other ways. I'm, no. a, I'm a rat. Yeah. <laughs> A root rat. <laughs> a root rat. But a yeah. root is pretty much standard as for the time. Yeah, absolutely. So there was the moment there's a moment in it where he basically baits an army into coming out across a lake and oh, then yep. he fires cannons into the lake, which is the thing that he does. And a they frozen all, lake. A frozen lake. They don't just walk into a no, lake. No, no, they walk into a lake. And they all drown. Mm-hmm. Right. Apparently there was no great lake. There was only a handful of fishing ponds. And apparently Napoleon knew how many people had been killed in this manner because he ordered the lakes to be drained. Ah. And he, uh, and there was apparently like like a handful of people maybe. And he never intended to trap the Austrian and Russian army or on a lake and seize the opportunity uh, with PR and, and the propaganda coup to make it look like he it was like his idea to do this. Right. So this thing, he like he apparently like fueled the fire of this thing that happened that didn't happen, I should say. Okay, so none of that happened. Not in that way, at okay, least. Right, yeah. Okay. No. Um, looked good though. It looks great. Yeah. I, it made me very reminiscent. Huh. Just a, of history. Yeah. Just yeah. go wow. Epic scale. That's right. Through history, yeah. I said to the yeah. people in the cinema. Epic, uh, epic bacon history. That's right. He never met um, the Duke of Wellington Whoa. at all. Never oh. met Rupert Everett. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, presumably the actors in real life met. That wasn't yeah. the green screen. And these last words were depicted are apparently wrong. So his last... he said France something Josephine? Is yeah, that what he, he said? said? France army Josephine. But apparently he said France the army, head of the army, Josephine. Oh, okay. Which also like. It's weird. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Head of the army. Head of the army. <laughs> is that him? Be like, head of the army. That's no, he, want, he wanted the head of the army to be Josephine. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. Army, head of France, head of the army. Kurt Russell? <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that. Future of cinema? <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> but um, apparently also he didn't come back because he missed Josephine. She was already dead by the time he was yeah, like, I'm, I'm doing a big coup. Mm. Got my hat on. I'm running in. And I'm running at you. Mm. So, you know. Yeah, what an awful time period. Oh, my God. You know? Except for that exile. That's where you'd want to be. Yeah, just you, left alone with servants. They've given you the yellow tint. Exactly. That, is, that means cool paradise, means you know? cool paradise, yeah. Oh, my God. Just retire, idiot. Yeah. You're only going to live another three years. That's exactly right, yeah. Nobody lived past 50. Relax. Mm. Yeah. God damn. What a colourful cast of characters. I though. reckon I'd join the army. Why? And I'd say. it's cool. 
what do I have to like? I'm not. I'm not saying. Yeah. That I'm going to commit enough crimes that I'll get exiled to Greece or whatever. Mm. But what would I have to do to get exiled to Greece? Just, just, just quietly. Yeah. Like what would take me to that line, but not over. Yeah. 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 You can't shoot me. Because <laughs> I'm related to Napoleon. I'm related to Napoleon. Yeah. So exactly. If he could. And then does he have living descendants? I wondered that myself. Let's check. Yes. Oh. Um, what did they think of the movie? Or are they fascists? Yeah. There's a guy. Yeah, they're all fascists. There's a guy called Jean Jean Christophe, Prince Napoleon, oh. who uh, is is the disputed head of the Imperial House of France. Okay, um, apparently he would be known as Napoleon the Eighth. Oh, the, if they uh, were still doing royal titles. But guess were. what? They're not. They killed everybody. They killed all the people that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were doing that. I tell you what, though, mm-hmm. I love that idea. Do you think he's in exile? No, he's this just he's wearing a suit here. At a, some what do you think he does? Do you think he's? Do you think he's? Because uh, he he'd be rich. Well, uh, okay, he studied whatever, whatever. Great. Um, he has an MBA at Harvard Business School. Oh, okay. He worked uh, in 20... 20- got that foot in the door. Got that, got that buckle shoe No, it says here he did it by himself. That's great. He said he didn't even use the name Napoleon, which is his name. Um, he said um, he was... Uh, here we go. He, he worked at a private equity firm for oh, a yeah, bit. that sounds Blackstone right. Group. Oh, Blackstone Group. Yeah, Terrific. Exactly, yeah. Oh, all the, wow. Um, he, Runs he, in the bloody family, it seems. He lived and worked at New York City as an investment banker for Morgan Stanley and in London as a private equity associate for Advent International. He's wow. fluent in French, English, and Spanish. He represents his dynasty's heritage at public events and ceremonies in France and elsewhere in Europe. God right. damn. There you go. I love that. Must be nice. It must be nice to work to, for Blackstone Capital. <laughs> must be nice. I bet the perks are excellent. Yeah, I bet. Love it. Yeah. So there you go. Get to go to the gold gold class lounge <laughs> in the airport. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, he's a, you know what? I thought he'd look more inbred. He looks like a normal dude. He does look normal. Yeah. Maybe he's had surgery. Maybe. <laughs> I bet. I don't know anything about this guy. I hope. I hope. <laughs> The, the the media catches up with him and is like, what do you think of superhero movies? <laughs> Listen, if you had to take a shot in the dark, mm-hmm. does this guy suck? Yeah. <laughs> yep. You don't know that. You don't know him, though. But if I had to take a shot in the dark <laughs> okay. with a big cannon. Well, I would never cast stones on this guy who probably sucks. Sure. But I would never say that. I understand, sure. Should we move it along? Yeah, let's do it. What are we going to talk about? Uh, what we're reading. Yep. And then what we're going to read. Yeah. I'm doing the theme. Whoa! Whoa was right. We're halfway there through the show. Probably a bit over, actually. I oh, definitely over. Great. Uh, <laughs> better not be, better not be uh, more than an hour left. I tell you what, Mason, uh, what have you been reading? Ah, uh, it's a great question. I'm uh, happy to ask. Uh, I rewatched John Wick Four. How was that? Holds up. Looks yeah. good, even on a smaller screen. Yeah, delightful. Do you think it's the best John Wick, or is one the best John Wick? I think Four is the best John. It Wick. Might be the best John. Having Wick. having, you know. We've we've all gone a, on a journey with John Wick. Yeah, you know it feels like we're on a journey with him together. Sure, but I think you know at the start of the journey, I'm like, this is the best John Wick because at the time was the only John Wick. It was in many ways. And then at the second one, I'm like, this is too silly. Yeah. And the third one, I'm like, this is silly. Well, silly and boring. <laughs> and the fourth one, I'm like, no, I get it. I like the second. This is one. cool. Yeah. That's the second cool. one is good. As yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Third one was bread and love. Okay. Yeah. Had a bit where he went to the desert and. Cut his dick off or whatever he has to do. Yep. You know, he always has to do something weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, for a, whoever's running whatever the thing is. Sure, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. This, I mean, this one's got the stair fight, which has an incredible That's joke. That's true. They should him. do something other than you have to cut off your ring finger to prove your... Like what? Something that wouldn't interfere with your ability you to do You have to learn saxophone. Sa- yes. <laughs> <laughs> but quickly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the table, Mr. Wick. I slide you a weird coin. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wick, please. <laughs> You've proven <laughs> your credentials. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's all holds up. That's yeah, good yeah, to that's know, true. Yeah. And also, I rewatched Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. I saw it's the, free now. It's free on, it's free on Param- Paramount Plus. I think. Yeah, Paramount Plus. Good for you. Must be nice. But um, you have Paramount Plus. Yeah, it must be nice. But Chris Pine... There's no way you don't have Paramount Plus. <laughs> I don't know if I do. I probably might just by accident. Mm. But Chris Pine said that they might get a sequel recently. Yeah. He's like, you never know. Which is a... Uh, someone pointed out on... Let on, me just say, if you're in the studio, don't do it. You, you should. Finan- so? I mean, I would love to see it, yeah. but like financially you shouldn't do it. But also uh, we, we might be in the last days of like just studios getting stupid amounts of money to do stuff that, you know... Yeah. You, you maybe direct a... 
Paramount Plus. Maybe, maybe it is doing well. Maybe it's doing well on streaming. Yeah. So that's so yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so just just be like, movie. well, where's the harm? Maybe this will be the one that kicks off or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, be like, yeah. Well, we give we've given money to everybody else. Here you go. Exactly. Also, somebody pointed out on Twitter. Uh, it is. It is very. It's. It's so accurate to real Dungeons and Dragons in the sense that everybody wants to play another game, but nobody knows when it's going to happen. <laughs> nobody can organize anything. So very true, Mason. Mm, very true. Very true to real life. Yeah. Um, I watched a movie on Netflix uh, on. by a comedy troupe. It's called Please Don't Destroy the Treasure of Foggy Mountain. I've heard the name, but what's, um, what's going on with that? So it's basically. It's kind of like you remember Mystery Team, the yeah, group love, yeah. that Donald Glover was mm. in. Donald uh, Glover, DC Pierce, and the third guy. Uh, Dominic uh, Dirks. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, so it feels like that kind of thing. And, oh. and Conan's in it, so it's a three three guys. Oh, maybe that's um, why I've seen the. It doesn't like rated particularly well on okay. like um, whatever the rating thing is, but I thought it was like silly and fun, and they've got a good chemistry, and it's absurd, okay. and uh, there's some pretty solid jokes in it. So I actually, I quite like, I quite liked it. It was just kind of. Like this is a fun, this is a fun watch. There's an actor in this movie, and their name is X Mayo. Whoa! So uh, I'm on board. You're on board. Yeah, it's got some fun little cameos that happen in it. You know, it's and Conan's like you don't see him often do some acting. Doing acting, and yeah, he's, you're he's right. Really, he's a really fun actor. Uh, Megan Slade is really good. Enough you've seen her on like various no, social never. media things, and now she's like breaking out in more mainstream stuff. Is good. John Goodman narrates. Some, but not all of it. Okay, and there's yeah. a moment where he's just like, "I'm John Goodman" or whatever. Right. You know, which okay. is, uh, which Would you is say fun. it's up there with like a um, like a hot rod or a never stop, never stopping, like a lonely no, island? I mean, stuff? Maybe. I mean, yeah, maybe like the earlier stuff. Sure. Okay. Probably. Sure. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I just, you got to start somewhere. I think it's fun. It might as well be a Netflix yeah. show with a Netflix movie with Conan O'Brien. That's right. It? They do. Mm-hmm. I think they do like the digital SNL skits or something oh. at the moment. These guys, but um, and they've, so they got some funny stuff, Mason. But uh, yeah, they've got a good. Dynamic, and I wonder which of them's going to be really famous, and the other two disappear. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they'll all come up together. They'll maybe. all be they'll all Leonardo DiCaprio together. Maybe they'll all be the next major Marvel movie star. Maybe they will. Mm. Uh, so that's all the thing. Oh, and I've been watching Monarch because um, sure. we've been going through the um, the MonsterVerse. The MonsterVerse. And speaking of, I'll talk more about this next week. But uh, Jordan Vogt Roberts, who directed Kong Skull Island, which is the last one we talked about, mm-hmm. he like message me and said like a bunch of nice stuff about Oh, it must that. be nice. It was really nice must actually. Must be nice stuff. Must be nice for a guy to email you yeah. and give you compliments. Must be nice. You also got a compliment. Oh, must be nice I mean, for me. me. Must be nice for me to have to hear secondhand that I got a compliment. <laughs> must be nice. It is nice. Yeah. Feels nice. That's nice for me. But he told me about I can't get out of this voice. I'm stuck. Oh, I'm trying to be sincere you can just but it stop must stop talking. No, I can't. I can't stop talking. That's antithetical to the podcast if somebody stops talking. <laughs> but I can keep talking when you stop. I guess, yeah. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Do you, you want, can, is that you can you wrap want? up the show. I mean, we're not there yet. I can all just bang my head on the desk. <laughs> okay, I'm fine now. I'm back. <laughs> but there was no noise podcasting. Yeah. It's a mystery. We removed it in editing. <laughs> it's the magic of editing. But uh, he told me a bunch of like stuff that also we got wrong. Oh. And also he cinema sins this, Mason. Oh, no. Uh, but also like some really which are, uh, behind the scenes stuff. But Claire's away this weekend and I'm looking after the kids and I'm doing this and I've got a mate coming from the UK. He's a menace and you know about this. <laughs> That's right. And so I want to like go through it properly. I'll, I'll talk about it next oh, week. Oh, you want to cinema sins his cinema sins? No, no. I just want to talk about it because okay. I'm like this is really fascinating stuff because like it's a fun movie, and there's yeah. some stuff where he told me. I'm like, that is wild. The Name studio. one thing we got wrong, though. Uh, I can't remember specifically. Well, if I got it wrong, it was a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. But um, he did agree with you on that cigarette thing when you were like, as if there'd be no time for a cigarette. <laughs> but some of the stuff he told me that, like, the studio was like, take that out. And he's like, why would you? Like, okay, I'll just say this. They wanted him to Have take. You, uh, does he know we're going to. Yeah, yeah I, t- I asked him. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to do, like, less John C. Riley, huh. which is, like, absolutely insane. No. Why would you do that? Why would you get John C. Riley and not use John C. Riley? Yeah. The man was in Walk Hard. What are you, do- what are you doing? Yeah. Has, didn't he win an Oscar maybe? I don't know. Probably. Probably for probably Walk for Hard. Chi- or Chicago or something. Well, probably for Chicago. Anyway, um, we'll talk about that next week. I love um, that. We can't do it mentioned in the Caravan of Garbage videos for the next MonsterVerse <laughs> movies because we recorded them. That's true. Four years ago. That's true. Yeah. All right, should we move to the next segment of the show? And is it the letter segment? Yes, and it must be nice. What? Now. The, the letter segment? Yeah, yeah. It must, it be, must be nice. It certainly must be nice. Now. As people know, I, I uh, play the letters theme through my phone. Yeah. And it's a new phone. Must be nice. It is nice. It's really <laughs> nice. Uh, but uh, the, the volume on this is very high, so I've, 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 I've pitched it somewhere in the middle. Okay. We'll see what happens. I like this experiment. It's too low, Mason. That's too loud. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters. It must be nice to be really inconsiderate. It is. 
It's fun. <laughs> That was great. If you do want to reach the show, you could hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Uh, that's right. Um, what do you got? <laughs> what do we Here's doing? an email from Adam. Adam! Adam says, wanting to scratch my eyes out watching Caravan of Garbage. All right. Hey, guys, I recently had laser eye surgery. Oh. It was hands down the worst experience of my life. But now you've got laser eyes. Exactly. And that's cool. Think, think about all the laser eye surgery you can do on others with your laser eyes. That's right. Mm. It's like a pyramid scheme. Or... Um, a laser, a laser pyramid scheme. You get your own lasers and then you... Anyway. <laughs> On the first day, I could hardly better open my eyes, much less look at my phone. Yeah. Because, well, then is life even worth living? No. But I needed some form of content to distract me from the pain. Mm-hmm. I'd already burned through all my podcasts and this, so the only option remaining was to throw myself at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm. I never do that. That's right. Uh, I, uh, the, given my sensitive eyes, this left me in the awkward position of having to ask my girlfriend to set this up for me. There was only one thing for it, so I groggily told her to type in caravan of garbage into the search bar and click the ver- first video that came up. She has no idea who you guys are or what your shtick is, so there was more than a hint of confusion in her voice when she replied, Is Shrek 2 okay? <laughs> <laughs> she followed up with, Don't you at least want to start at the beginning? Anyway, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's a good point. Yeah, uh, and he goes through the goes through the uh, goes through some of the videos. Uh, the uh, the algorithm fed me your absolute slog through Michael Bay Transformers movies. Listening to you guys process a similarly awful ordeal gave me an enormous amount of comfort. The laser eye surgery is very similar to watching five Michael Bay Transformers. I movies. I would be genuinely interested to know if Mesa would rather watch them again or get LASIK himself. Oh yeah, we, have you talked about that? Did In, you get LASIK? I don't know if I would. I think yeah. I'm just a glasses guy. Your now. glasses. I don't guy. like anything touching my eyes. Yeah. And I know people who've had LASIK and they're like, now it feels like there's somebody touching my eyes all the time. Oh my god. And I don't like that. Would you like me to touch your eyes because I'm your friend? Oh yeah, then we can get used to it. I'll come <laughs> over and you can touch my eyes a couple of hours a day until I'm used to it. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to say a big thanks for all the hilarious content as always. Oh, we're just happy to continue to like just kick goals. Yeah, that's right. You know. The biggest compliment I can pay is that I will most likely listen to all these episodes again, even given the now associated trauma. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, it's like when you you know you you throw up on a certain type of alcohol and then you can right. never have it again. That's right. It's like, exactly like you can that. never eat vomit ever again. That's exactly right. That's right. Uh, that's right. Mason, what about this? Go this on. Is from Nick Saxby, and he says hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm glad you've got laser eyes, by the way. It's cool. Um, my six year old is a fan of superhero stuff, particularly Marvel things. He is getting uh, great at reading. I wasn't really a comic book. Must be nice. Must be nice. Must be nice to die to read. Don't know much about the genre. Would you recommend him? uh, What would you recommend him getting started in superhero comics? Um, Well, actually, I do have a recommendation for that, but I I forgot to look it up. Do you mind if I just do that now? Do do a little look up. I'm going to need 40 minutes. Okay, you can have 40 minutes. I'm going to eat this biscuit. Can I have that? No. You can. You want one? Uh, No, Mason. I was joking. I was joking. God, you 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 don't get me. I'm funny and you don't get me. I'm not a classic mate for a moment on your podcast. Your mum has a podcast. I'm eating a cracker with cheese on it. Oh, okay, right. Yum, 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 yum. Here's a good one I might start with. <laughs> so they do these. I think it's a little bit stale. Okay. They do these kids' graphic novels. Okay. Uh, there's like a Miles Morales one and uh, there's a Spider Ham one and there's a Shuri one and whatever. And the one's called, uh, the Miles Morales ones, there's one called Miles Morales Shockwaves and Miles Morales Stranger Tides. Okay. Um, they're just contained stories and it's just Miles Morales doing a Spider-Man thing with my son because we uh, we read them together. Mm-hmm. So does every, he help you out with the big words, James? He absolutely does, Mason. <laughs> <sighs> that was mean, actually. Um, <laughs> and so they're, they're like good kids' comics to uh, to get into. There's some, I don't know, I've ordered a bunch of stuff like, I get a lot of like Ninja Turtles comics from my son. He likes Ninja mm. Turtles, so like various yeah. anime. There's a new Ninja Turtles Saturday morning animated cartoon comic book, ah, oh. uh, which is a continuation of the the cartoon from the eighties and nineties. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, and that's that's a fun kids mm. read as well. And reading's reading. Reading that's is good. reading. Yeah. You know? As a teacher, when I was a teacher, Mason, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what I used to say to parents. I used to say, "Reading is reading, and if you want to fight about it, let's yeah. step outside." That's right. <laughs> Oh, you're bigger than me. I don't want to fight anymore, actually. That's right. Now you've, now you've, <laughs> I hope you've learned your lesson. Now you've pulled up to your full height. I'm scared. <laughs> but I still believe that thing about reading, unless you raise your fist at me, in which case I don't. <laughs> I don't care anymore. So there you go. There's some good ones. Mm, very good. What else, Mason? Well, I don't know because I don't, I don't have any kids, so I don't know. Oh, I just meant I'd say read emails. Watchmen. Okay, Read yeah. Watchmen to your child. What did you read as a kid? I Watchmen. mean, it was just kind of like anything, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you can get yeah. your hands on. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really. I got a Batman Ninja Turtles crossover comic. I got that. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, um, it would have. I mean, it, there would have been stuff pitched to kids, but it was really just whatever was at the newsagent. Absolutely, and I didn't really. No, <laughs> didn't really think about it. I'm pretty sure, confident I did read like 
The Dark Knight Returns way too early. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the yeah. Batman Year One, et cetera. Absolutely. Which is a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. A bit of fun. Yeah. Here's an email from Will. Hi, Will. Uh, thematically, very similar to the last email, okay. uh, you guys made my nose surgery less unpleasant. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We were there. Laser nose. Oh, my God. Incredible. Hey, mates, got surgery done on my nose yesterday and just about to be discharged. I haven't been able to breathe through my nose or sleep properly for four years. Oh, my God. I was only able to get a diagnosis a month ago. Turned out I had chronic sinusitis, deviated septum, and some big old polyps in my nostrils. Yuck. Damn. How'd they get in there? I don't know. Mm. Uh, recovery so far from the surgery has been a little rough with all the bleeding, but listening to your old podcast episodes help me sleep and keep my mind at ease. Thanks, William. God damn, if you're having a surgery, major or minor, mm-hmm. this is the podcast for you. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think I think you should probably just say no painkillers for me. No pain, no gain. No. Send the anesthetician away yep. and bring in the podcast thetician <laughs> and you can play favorite my favorite episodes from the Weekly Planet podcast. Oh, my God. And first incision. No, I would like some drugs, please. Yeah, please. Actually, I've made Actually, a terrible mistake. Lots and lots of drugs. And also I realised I don't like that podcast that much. Yeah. And when you play it out loud and everyone in the room can hear it, it's a bit embarrassing. It is embarrassing, <laughs> the things they're talking about. Uh, what else? I've got one more, Mason. Okay, go for it. Oh, no, i got two more. This is from Shady who says, May I propose in the spirit of monthbius, Madam Webuary? I love that. I love it too. Is that when it's coming out? Yes. Love that. I mean, if it wasn't, then I wouldn't love it, would I? I mean, if it's coming out in February. Feb- Shady has thought about it. Yeah. I mean, if it comes out in February, we could still do that, I reckon. Yeah, why yeah. not? Wait. You've been a different month. Yes. You can still do it. Yeah, no. it's fine. Because yeah. Monthbius was the spot whenever That's true. Monthbius yeah. came out. Yeah. Yeah. What else have I got here, Mason? I got March one more. to March. What's that? If, if it comes out in March, we can call it March to March. March to March. Yeah. March to like Madam. Okay. And Web, March like Web. <laughs> March to March. This is from but Ma- it's in the font. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Madam Web font. Okay, well that, that which is a pretty basic font, it, if yeah. I recall. It's just wow, that's really rude. That's pretty, it's be, like a Canva you're font. You're gonna be eating your words when everybody yeah, loves yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's from uh, Amanda Man who says, "Hi ho, mate- mateos. It's your old pal Amanda here. My birthday's on the twenty eighth. I would like, I would just, and it would just make my whole year if you could sing me a little birthday song, or you know, just a happy birthday will do. Smiley face, love and gratitude, and happiness to you both. Are we allowed to sing in a happy birthday song now? Is it out of copyright? We can do our own version. Nice." Go on. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. But nice. if you also it's your birthday and you want this, put your own name in. That's right. Maybe we could just do some names, a list of names. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Meso. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, James. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific stuff, Mason. Have you got any more? Are we going to call it a day? Oh, it's a great question. A lot of great questions. You're full of great questions. Mm-hmm. Full of great questions. God, Mason, I have to go out. Okay, this is an email. I from... have to go out, Mason. Okay, this is, from... this is an email from Blamo. I'm already feeling it. Real name. No, you're right. You're doing great. You're full of vitamins. You're full I... of vitamins and vigor. I've been drinking a lot of Hydrolyte. It's a good idea. It's a very good idea. I, mean, I don't think it stacks. It stacks. Over days. If you're hydrolated, you, if you're if you if you're hydrated, it helps, Mason. I think you're probably too hydrated. It stacks. It can it look at look, look how bloated I am. Look Does the, this look like a man who's overhydrated? Look, look at the bottle. It says symptoms may include bloating and grumpy, <laughs> being a grumpy guts. My guts are not grumpy. They're mm. just hydrated. Hey, James and Mason, do you ever have moments where a comic's art just completely kills it for you? It ah, leaves you okay. incapable of reading it. I know we all have art we love, but do you feel this guttural dislike as I do? Uh, yes. This happens with me, unfortunately, with All-Star Superman. Oh. That's Frank Quietly. That's, yeah, okay. Uh, who, I, had, I, who has a very distinctive... I mean, I like that, but I can yeah. see why you wouldn't like that because he looks like a thumb. Yeah, everybody's sort of thumb-like Everyone in that. looks like a thumb in that. Yeah, universe. I don't know. Yeah, I... Sometimes, sometimes Frank Quitely's art does kind of. I find it a little bit jarring. It's quietly upsetting for you. Yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah. Well, speaking of art, we might find a little bit jarring. We looked at a comic for Big Sandwich, a book club this mm-hmm. week at BigSandwich.co, which is our private Patreon service. That's we right. looked at the Four Doctors comic. It's called Four Doctors. It's called Four Doctors. It's in relation to uh, a Four Doctor comic crossover that happened in 2015, and also there was a new David Tennant episode. We haven't watched it yet, but we we'll probably oh, yeah, do the three, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. we'll just talk about it a bit roughly. Be like, yeah, he came back and he. He did, his, he did the thing that he does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He went, Blamo, I'm the doctor, and That's everybody exactly right, yeah. ran away or got evaporated. Mm. Yeah. We've talked, I think maybe we've talked about this on our podcast, The Big Sandwich Classic Comic Book Club. Good plug then. But um, Dave Gibbons, who direct, who, who illustrates Watchmen. Uh, Watchmen, I find his non superhero art. Kingsman. Yes. That's a good example. I find it quite difficult to, yeah. to navigate. Because everyone looks like a bland man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because he's good at making like, with Watchmen, because there's so many colourful characters and scenarios, but it's kind of drawn like tra- like tradition, very traditionally. Yeah, that sure, That really sure, sure. works well together with all the design elements. Uh-huh. But yeah, I guess it doesn't always work, yeah. does it? For you, I love him. But I bet he's done other. Like I bet he's done other. Like I bet work. he hasn't. I bet he's only done one comic, and it's the Watchmen, and that other one you don't like. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. Oh, you know what? Uh, also, um, art look, again. I've I've just I've just been critical of legendary comic book artist Dave Gibbons, uh, who I'm sure has done lots more great stuff. Oh, he did. Well, I mean, he did. The Superman story for the man who has everything. Oh. And he's done a bunch of stuff for 2000 AD. But anyway, I, I, I guess I prefer his his kind of more out there stuff, I guess yeah. is what I'm saying. Oh, he did Alien Salvations and Sacri- Salvation and Sacrifice. That's a good book. I did Rogue Trooper. Anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, you look like a real idiot. I this guy's like actually done a lot of good comics. Well, I was going to say uh, people that do a lot of tracing. Yeah. Not not like Alex Ross who will like bring people in yeah, and take photo life reference, models and life models and stuff like that. But just people will get who like trace out of magazines. So uh, like a – and they just do it with the – they just do whatever pose they need. They just find a yeah. uh, a random person and then trace them. Or pornography. Or pornography. <laughs> and and so like characters look different from panel to yeah, panel because yeah, totally. they're just they're traced from different people. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's that that is the art that, that upsets me, I think. You do not like it. I do not like. Well, I love it. I do it. not like. Oh, oh, there's a new speaking oh. of speaking of tracing, I was I'm gonna ready. say. If we're gonna I'm, I'm I think I might check out Marvel has a new ultimate universe. Oh yeah, how's that kicking off? What's the deal with that? I don't know. I don't know if I think there's some current issue, but it's something involving the 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 Reed Richards from the previous Ultimate Universe, and he's made a new universe, oh, okay, and et cetera. But it's must, um, be, must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> must be nice. But Jonathan Hickman is writing a new Spider Man series. I don't think it's out yet, but it's out soon. Oh in my which God. Spider Man, bec- Peter Parker becomes Spider Man much later in life. So he so he's already married and he has kids. Yeah, so that's a bit of fun. Whoa! Yeah, he missed the window there. To become Spider Man earlier. That's true, That's the yeah. It's time to do it. I would hate to be Spider Man now. Jesus, on top of everything else? Yep. Forget about it. Bad I wouldn't back. even do, I wouldn't yeah. even do it. No, nah, my back would be fine because I have Spider Man powers. That's true. Yeah. Except if I was a Tobey Maguire version, it was a bad back. That's true, yeah. But I wouldn't be that version. I'd be unique to me. That's great. I'd probably be the most iconic version at the end That's of the day. That's great. Or so. you. People would be like, finally, somebody did it right. Finally, somebody's done it iconically. <laughs> Finally, someone's been an iconic Spider-Man. And God, he looks good, people that's would right. say, yeah, that's as right. I swung past. No, I wouldn't be swinging. Yeah. I wouldn't use it. But some of the Ultimate Universe comics are out now, I think, so I'm going to check those okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Great. But otherwise, that's the end of the show. I that think. is the end of the Folks, show. thank you so much for listening. We absolutely appreciate it. Uh, thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Yeah, what are you telling them? The new them? Listeners. Tell them we're good. Tell them that. Tell them we're good for surgery. Tell them secrets. Tell them we're good for surgery and then stab them. Yeah. You and go. then you hand them the iPod. Yes, that's with right. That, with us on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. need this. Yeah, 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 yeah. For your yeah, long yeah. recovery. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcatcher of choice. Do that's it right. in app. I'll read them out. James will read it out. I've got one here, Mason. I've got a review. Okay. It's from JTown0921 who says, My Aussie boys, I can't even remember how I came across this podcast, but I've been listening for about five years. Love every episode. James and Mason have the best banter and are absolutely hilarious. We're Aussie boys. We certainly are. That's why we're so funny. We're the two most iconic Aussie boys there are. That's right. Some people might say Hamish and Andy. Some might say Daryl Summers and Pluck a Duck. Some Some might say Daryl Summers and Dickie Nee. Some might say (laughs) Daryl Summers and Red Simons. Some people might say Daryl Summers and... Wilbur, Wilbur Wilde. Some might say Daryl Summers and John, John Blackman, Blackman, cartoonist. Some might say um, Daryl Summers and, and the Lavinia Nixon. Thank yeah. you, yeah. But they're all wrong. Yeah, they don't, that's not as good as yeah. us. It's Daryl Summers and a clone of Daryl Summers <laughs> working together. But after that, it's us. And then it's us, The best yeah, Aussie yeah. boys. What else we got, Mason? Or should I say Daryl Summers' as clone? <laughs> How else could you be so entertaining? That's exactly right. Uh, folks, uh, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. You can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group or you can go to the Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord, fun civil chats about podcasts Absolutely. and pop culture. Thank you to the moderators over there, uh, Fidel and Maisie and Sarabi. They Whoa. also do TikToks and Weekly Planet Clips, Clips channels right, on, on YouTube. The YouTube and all sorts mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, first follow our friend Rob Collings who edits this podcast. He does yeah, all sorts of things, keeping you up to date on all things The Weekly Planet. He's at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. You can follow me, uh, Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, uh, Nick Maso on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You're chucking a buck or an amount you would not miss. That's right. That's the key. Or if you're a big Richie Rich. If you're, a, if you're a big Napoleon Bonaparte type, you're in exile and you're getting two million francs a year. Yes. Well, then the least you could do is pay us nine US dollars per month at bigsandwich.co. But pre- preferably more. 
Yeah. That's the least you That's could do. That's the least. You could, you could, yeah, if you're on 2 million francs a year. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Whatever that is now. Yeah, whatever. It's probably less than you yeah, think. I don't know. Um, uh, go to bigsamish.co. You've got uh, bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, video game, let's plays, all sorts of stuff. That's right. Good times. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. If you want a T-shirt, you go to tpublic.com. You search for The Weekly Planet. There's some T-shirts there. Don't I, even worry about it. I'm, uh, I'm looking. As far as we know. I want to do Godzilla minus one. Yeah. But I just it's not playing anywhere. Really yeah, there was a, there was God, a there was a premiere, I think. Yeah, maybe it was in Sydney, and we didn't go to it. No, uh, but hopefully we'll get a. a, a, a it's not look doesn't look like it's showing soon-ish. anywhere near us. But um, oh, boo. I don't know. I don't know what we'll do next week. We'll oh, figure look it at out. the Cinema Nova website. Maybe it's Cinema Nova. I want to go to Cinema Nova. Maybe. It's nice at Cinema Nova. I want to go to Village Cinema Nova or whatever it is. Oh. Well, we you're just, in luck because it's not on there. Can't we just watch Killers of the Flower Moon again? No. Can't we just watch Hunger Games prequel again? Oh, yeah. Your yeah. favorite. My favorite long movie. I guess we could do that. Yeah, cool. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye.